Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 272 and I'm Lisa, also known as Fibernymph, um, pretty much across everywhere on social media. I will put my screen in here so you can know where all those places are that you can find me. Okay, so today is Tuesday, January 30th, and I gotta tell you right now, it's very blustery outside. Um, the wind is howling, so hopefully you won't hear too much of that, but if you do, you'll understand why. Um, and also, just to give you a heads up, in case you did not watch the video I recorded last week, which um, was simply a shop news and update preview video. Um, I'm recording with a new camera, so if things look a little bit different, that's why. Hopefully they sound okay. Um, <laughs> it was funny, last week I basically took the new camera out of the box, plugged it in, and did the video. I didn't play with it at all beforehand, so I really was just winging it. Um, and for the most part, everything went okay. Like I got a lot of feedback saying, wow, the picture is super crisp and you know, very clear, clearer than it's been in a really long time. So that was excellent. Um, I had an issue though, as I was processing the video, that the sound suddenly, like it was fine through like the first couple of levels of processing. And then once I got to the last stage, suddenly it seemed like the sound was off. Like the syncing was, behind by like a second. It was not a lot, but that was what it was. And I was messing with it for hours and hours. And finally, I just thought, you know what, I have to upload this. So I did. And what was weird was then the next morning when I looked at it, if I looked at it on my phone on YouTube, it was fine. Like the sound and the video was perfectly aligned. Um, but anytime I looked at it on my computer, either just the file or um, actually on YouTube, it was behind. I don't know enough about techie stuff to understand why that is. I tried reading stuff online. I don't understand it. But the thing was, nobody else seemed to have that experience. Everybody, <laughs> everybody else just commented on the video. And when I inquired about the audio too, everybody said it was fine. They didn't have any issues. So fingers crossed that that will be the case again today, because I did play with this new camera and lots of software over the past week and I can't I can't figure out anything else to do with it so we're just gonna go with it and and enjoy the fact that I have a nice crisp picture now and hopefully not much fuzziness due to snow reflection um, anyway how are you I hope you're having a really good Oh, what's it been? Probably a week and a half almost, probably a little over that since we had a regular podcast. Um, I will say that the schedule over the next several months may be kind of like that. I may end up doing a regular video um, once every couple of weeks and then sticking in an update preview or shop news video where I need to. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later on in the podcast, but it is what it is and we'll do the best we can. But for right now, let's talk about some knitting because that's why we're here. I have finished objects to show you, sort of. <laughs> um, since the last time I recorded, I did finish my husband's socks. That was the Arnie and Carlos um, garden colorway, which is the Regia yarn. However, I finished those right after I recorded last time, I believe, and then I gave them to him because I knew I wasn't gonna get to record again for at least a week, and I wanted him to be able to wear them. So I don't have them, but I do have a picture, so I will put a picture of them in here. And of course, you can also see them on my RAV page. Um, I was really happy with how they turned out. The second one turned out a little different than the first, but nothing overly noticeable. It wasn't a big deal. He likes them. That's what's important because he is, he loves his hand knit socks. So yeah, he has another pair in his arsenal. Um, the other thing that I knit and finished, I think maybe I showed you the first one last time where the dishcloths that I was making for my son, um, who's moving into his own apartment. I think I had one of them finished last time. I did do two more but I have since given those to him as well. So I will again, put a picture of them in here. 
And I just basically did, I have like a few dishcloths that I just can do off the top of my head. One's a mitered square, one is just a basket weave, like a five by five basket weave stitch. Um, and then the other one, the other one was actually sort of grandma's favorite dishcloth, that pattern, except I didn't bother to look the pattern up. I was just sort of winging it. So it was a diagonal garter stitch dishcloth with um, like eyelet edges around the, the outside. It was weird. I know I did not do it actually the way it's supposed to be done, but it worked and it will be a functional dishcloth. I made them all on somewhere between 36 and 40 stitches because I wanted them to be smaller so they don't get big and floppy when they're in the water. Um, so yeah, those are done. All those wonderful finished objects. Now, I do have a hoe that I can show you. Oh, and the, um, the dishcloth was just sugar and cream cotton from Pat Catan, so nothing super exciting. <laughs> um, but I do have a half finished object and I will put that on a sock locker. And this is my burr sock. Um, my burr colorway that I dyed up for the shop. I am going to be doing a restock of that sometime in the not too distant future. But I am making myself a pair of shorty socks with that and I finished the first one. So um, this was obviously the burr self-striping colorway. It's got the three blues in it and then it's got that fun little speckled stripe in there as well. And I did an afterthought heel um, with um, aqua shock is the color, which coordinates with this stripe here in the sock, obviously. And then I ended up starting my contrasting toe sooner than I really needed to. Because if you look at that, like here is where the toe started, but this had been that next aqua shock stripe right here. And if I would have waited any longer to add this color, I would have had like a tiny bit of this um, speckled stripe and then it would have gone back into aqua shock for the toe. And I thought that would look a little bit weird. So I just went ahead and picked up the the semi-solid skein here. So it, it just looks like it has a really long toe, but it really doesn't. It's just the way it worked out um, because I thought it would look better than doing it the other way. So I'm happy with it. It fits well. It's just, you know, again, a little shorty sock. Um, US one needles, over 60 stitches. Um, it's pretty much my plain vanilla pattern. You know, I do nine rounds of one by one ribbing for my cuff. Then I did um, pretty much a full repeat of the the colorway before I, and I put the heel in in the middle of this stripe so that it would coordinate with it so anyway nothing fancy but the first one's finished and I do have the second one cast on Dang. <laughs> don't want it to fall over and make a noise um, the second one is cast on so it's just the top part um, and since it's I just do a regular you know, a cut in afterthought heel. I don't put waste yarn in. So this will just get knit straight down until I get to where I will need to put the toe in. And then I'll add my toe yarn. <laughs> so that's pretty much the sock I'm knitting on at this point. Um, just because my husband's socks are done and this was the one that tickled my fancy to work on. Um, let's see what else. I'm looking over here because this new setup, I have my camera on a tripod here, but my laptop is over here with my show notes on it, so that's why I need to keep looking over here. I apologize if that's distracting to you. I might try to put it somewhere else some other time, but it's the best I've got right now. Um, next up, I would love to show you my arboreal sweater that I'm working on. Uh, I showed it to you last time when I recorded. That's the Jennifer Steingas pattern, the beautiful color work yoke that I was going gangbusters on and um, I'm using the Cascade 2 220 in the mallard blue and then the aspen is the um, contrasting light color that I'm using. However, funny story about this sweater. So I showed it to you when I recorded whatever a week and a half ago and then after that, I only had, I think, maybe nine or ten rows of the color work chart left to go. But in the days right after that, I just, I was really busy and I didn't have enough time to sit down and work on it. So I didn't touch it. 
and then the weekend came and we were busy and we had been at my house one day and back and you know I just didn't have time to work on it so then the next week rolled around and it was Monday and I had time Monday morning I was gonna work on it I couldn't find it <laughs> and I'm looking around and everywhere out here it's like I cannot find my sweater that was odd and I thought well maybe I took it with me when we were at my house this weekend and I accidentally left it there that was the only thing I could think of so I thought okay fine you know I'll get it tomorrow because I was going back to my house on Tuesday last week so in the meantime on Monday I decided I'd cast on something else because I had another project I wanted to start so that's what I did so then Tuesday came around I went to my house looked for my sweater I couldn't find it and at this point I'm starting to panic because it's kind of hard to lose a full-on sweater project especially one that's that far along you know a sock that's in a little drawstring bag that's easy to kind of accidentally toss somewhere and overlook it but a sweater is a little more difficult so I was at my house Tuesday evening through Wednesday so no sweater Got back here Wednesday night, it was late. So Thursday morning, I look for my sweater again. I'm thinking, okay, this is ridiculous. This sweater has got to be here someplace. So I started thinking, okay, where was the last time I saw this? When was it? And it was when I had recorded the podcast the week prior. So I thought, okay, I came out here, I started looking around and then it dawned on me. I didn't record out here last time. I recorded back in my back yarn room, that super dark, horrible, I. That did not. I know some of you thought that was okay, but that was just hideous for me. It was painful to process. <laughs> anyway, I went back there and lo and behold, that is where my project bag was sitting on the floor up against a whole bunch of other things and it just got left back there. And I felt silly because it had been here all along and then I felt bad because my poor abandoned sweater had been stuck back there for a week. Um, at that point though, I also didn't really have a lot of time like I'm, that's a project that if I'm gonna work on it I want to have at least an hour that I can dedicate to it because I'm doing the color work and the chart and I need to get into it so I didn't have a lot of time plus I was really into this other project that I had started and I really really wanted to work on that so all that to say is the Arboreal has had no progress whatsoever on it since the last time you saw it hopefully that will change before the next time I record because I do want to finish it. I have not lost interest in it. It's just been like a comedy of errors with it that it has not had any more work on it. So that's why. On the other hand though, I did actually leave my wedding rings at my house this past weekend when we were there because Sunday we were working um, and I was packing stuff out of my kitchen and cleaning and I didn't want to get them dirty or messed up. So I'd taken them off and set them. I have a little ring dish on my dresser and then when we were leaving we were kind of in a hurry and we were I don't know 10 minutes from the house and I'm like oh my gosh I left my rings <laughs> and Bill's like yeah you can get them Tuesday so <laughs> he wasn't too concerned it's just weird because I'm, I'm not used to not having them on unless I'm like working or dying or something like that so I don't have my rings on today okay anyway since I was not working on the sweater because it was missing in action sort of um, I had cast on something else. Now, the story behind this is that recently I did a massive soaking of a lot of hand spun. Um, I'm horrible about soaking my hand spun after it's been applied. I usually wait until I've got several skeins of it and then I do it all at once. Only this time I had waited for about two years. <laughs> I literally had two years worth of spinning that had never been soaked. So I went downstairs one day and I decided I'm just going to do it all and I did um, and then suddenly the next day you know it was dry and I'm like oh, it's all squishy and fun and I want to knit with my hand spun so I decided to cast on a hand spun project and you might remember last summer I did a lot of spinning during um, Stash Dash and one of the things I spun were the Rainbow Targi from Highland Handmaids. Um, she had put together a set of one ounce of each of the six rainbow colorways and I spun those up and then when I plied them, I plied them um, like the red, the orange, and then there was a little bit of orange left so I did that with the yellow and then I did most of the yellow with the green. Then there was a little green left over so I had a small skein of green blue and then the last skein was blue purple. So 
those were among the yarn, the hand spun that I soaked, and I decided I was going to cast something on with that because I just I couldn't not cast on something with this hand spun. And so I decided to do the Dipped Infinity Scarf. I was calling it a cowl in my show notes, but it's the Dipped, in, Dipped Infinity Scarf by Laura Chow, who is Cosmic Pluto. Um, this is an old pattern. This pattern has been around for quite some time, 2009, um, and it's been in my queue probably that long. Now, the way it is written, you're supposed to be doing it with a lot of different colors of fingering weight held together so you're holding two colors of fingering weight and then you're dropping one and adding the next and and so on so you kind of get this you know this gradient effect is how she did it in sort of a marled kind of way um, she was marling before it was cool I guess um, that is obviously not what I'm doing because I'm just using yarn that's already plied together in the different colors but I like the texture of this and so that's why I decided to do this um, it is actually it's not a scarf it's an infinity cowl I don't know why she called it a scarf but it is actually knit as a big cowl you actually cast on 252 stitches a lot of stitches um, and then you work in the round and it's a four row repeat essentially and I have just been going like gangbusters on it I am loving this project so much so you've got a little bit of ribbing there and then you start into the the patterning which if I hold it at a certain angle you can see those diagonal lines that you end up getting and that's the texturing um, the texturing is not going to show up nearly as well in this yarn as it would if I did it with like a nice smooth fingering weight yarn the way the pattern's written. I mean it's written for a DK because if you're holding two strands of fingering together it basically is a DK and this is just kind of a DK weight yarn that I spun. So the thing about the Targi is it's very squishy. It's a very spongy fiber and as I was spinning it it was very poofy and um, you can even see I mean there's some sections of the yarn that are extremely poofy. <laughs> you can see one right there on the outside compared to some of the others that are tighter and narrower and everything. Um, yeah, this is not a consistent yarn by any stretch. Plus, I, if I remember correctly, I was spinning this I, kind of woolen. <laughs> I never completely spin things woolen because I always go back and forth between woolen and worsted, but I think I largely spun this woolen. So it's also quite poofy and airy from that spinning technique. Um, so all that to say, you know, the patterning is sort of being disguised a bit um, from the yarn just being very squishy and puffy. Otherwise, I love it. I mean, even in spite of that, I love it. Um, I love how the colors worked up. And it's just so funny because I was stuck in this green-yellow section what seemed like forever. I think that was probably my largest ball. <laughs> um, and I was really kind of getting tired of it. So, as you can see, I'm, I'm in my last ball now, the blue-purple. Um, what's really interesting is like the red and orange, when you have the orange plied with the red, it really kind of looks yellow. Back in college, I took this art class. Um, it was a lot of, it was, I think, 2D art or something. I don't remember. No, it couldn't have been 2D. I don't know what it was. Anyway. We, one of, we didn't get a book for that class, we got a pack of paper, um, like they were this big and you know it was this thick and it was every color in the spectrum practically. But one of the things that he taught us early on in that class was how when, when you're putting colors next to each other, um, they can cause the color next to them to change. So if you're putting um, a red next to an orange since orange is made up of red and yellow, it's gonna pull the red out of that orange and that orange is gonna appear more yellow. And you can really, really see that in here because um, it really does kind of look yellow. Now here's your yellow, my, yellow orange um, section. And the orange, I mean, it was a light orange to begin with, but you can definitely see the orange better there than you can in here. And then you come up to here with the green and the, the yellow and um, 
you know, the yellow definitely stands out. I don't really think it affects the green so much, although whenever I'm looking at the green in this small blue-green section, the green does look a little darker, so I don't know. It's just, it's fun. I'm enjoying it a lot, and I can't wait to finish it. It's going to be super long, um, and it'll definitely be something that I can probably triple around my neck. But I'm just basically having fun knitting with my hand spun. I want to knit with my hand spun more, and this was a fun project to start it out on. I'm doing it on US 8s. The pattern called for US 9s, but I knew this was a little lighter weight than a DK. It's a light DK, so 8s are working really well, and it's a very fun pattern. It's very addictive. That's why even once I found the sweater, it's like, but I really just want to work on this right now. So that's what's been getting a lot of love. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I did cast on another sock. Okay. But I had a good reason. I feel like I need to defend this. Um, and this sort of is a new thing, but I'm not, I'm going to talk about it now instead of in my new things section. Um, I was fortunate enough to trade with somebody on Instagram who had gotten a set of these um, Addy Flexi Flips. They're not in here. This is the container they come in though. Um, but they're called Flexi Flips. And she had them in a US Zero size. Um, and she tried them and didn't really like them, so she wanted to trade them with somebody who wanted to try them out, and she was willing to trade for like a bunch of minis, and I'm like, I'd be happy to trade minis for those, because I really want to try these needles. If you're not familiar with them, basically what they are is they're three small, ne oh here, wait, this is the one that's not being worked on. There are three of these. So they're Addy needles on a short, little, tiny, like an inch and a half long cable in between them. So they flex. Basically, they're like DPNs that bend in the middle. Now, I know there's other products out there right now, like there are like actual bent DPNs and things, but these are actually the metal Addy needles with a little, little piece of cable in between them. Um, what's interesting is one needle has the turbo tip and the other needle, or this one's the turbo tip, this one is the rocket tip. So you can choose which tip you want to use for, you know, knitting. Um, anyway, so you get three of them, and the whole concept is it's sort of a cross between knitting with DPNs, um, and I think it's a cross between that and knitting Magic Loop, sort of, because the process is very similar to Magic Loop, except there's no loop, there's just the two needles, um, but it's also very similar to how you hold things when you're knitting with DPNs. I have not knit socks on DPNs in a very, very long time. I enjoyed using DPNs, but I always ended up with ladders, and so I kind of got away from them. Um, I did try them, and like I said, I, all I did was cast on. I've got a, a rib, my ribbing is done. I have, I think, maybe one round of the sock, um, but I just wanted to try them, so I did this yesterday. I did have to cast on twice, because the first time I ended up with a hot mess. Um, essentially, I cast on my 60 stitches all on one needle, and then I took a second needle and I just slipped 30 of those stitches back off, so I had them on two different needles, and then, you know, I just set them up to be ready to work on them, and, you know, it, it's a little fiddly at first, um, just figuring out how to situate things and where to set the needle that's in the back. But otherwise, it's really not bad. I'm kind of enjoying it. Um, I can't say that I enjoy it as much as knitting Magic Loop because I'm very quick at knitting with Magic Loop, but this isn't bad. Definitely enjoying this experiment way more than when I tried the nine inch circular sock knitting experiment a couple years ago. That was not fun at all. That hurt my hands. This does not hurt my hands. This is, I mean, even though these needles are shorter than a regular, um, needle that I would knit with, it's fine. I've got plenty to hold on to. I don't feel like my hands have to be all scrunched up. So anyway, I'm going to keep giving these a try. I'm going to knit this sock and see how it goes. Um, I cast on using West Yorkshire Spinners 4-ply um, in their birds colorway. This is the blue tit colorway, which I've had in my stash for a while. So I thought, eh, I'll try it with that. So we will see how this goes. Um, like I said, I'm, it's sort of an experiment. <laughs> I 
And I figure if nothing else, you know, if I end up not liking it, I can just take it off and put it on, you know, magic or a long circular, do magic loop and it'll be fine. But I don't even have it in a project bag right now because I just did this yesterday morning. But I'm having fun trying out the needles and I will update you on my experience with them as I continue to knit with them. So, okay. <laughs> Um, I think that's everything I worked on. It is. That's all the knitting I did. I did do some spinning. Um, hmm, I don't know that I can bring this over here. Let me just suffice it to say I finished the second half of the one lupin um, fiber that I was spinning. I really want to show you. I don't know. Okay, hang on. Let's see if I can do this without knocking into the camera. <laughs> Okay, so that's my second bobbin. I just finished that yesterday morning. Look at those colors, aren't they pretty? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to ply this. Um, okay, I'm gonna move this back, it's gonna be loud, hang on. Okay, um, I can't wait to ply it and see how it looks. So that was some Polworth silk, Polworth silk? No, BFL silk. Oh gosh, now I don't remember, and my tag's way over there. I'll let you know for sure next time. Do I have it written on my, oh yeah, BFL silk. I have it in my show notes. That's why we have show notes, folks. Um, it's five ounces of BFL silk from One Lupin um, up in Maine. And I'm just doing a two ply. So we'll see what kind of yardage I get. I have to decide which wheel I'm gonna use to spin it on. Cause if I spin it on my traveler, which is what I, or if I ply it on my traveler, which is what I spun it on, um, I'll end up with two small skeins which isn't a big deal. I still don't have, we haven't looked at my other wheel to fix it, to keep it from clunking. So, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but it'll get plied. Hopefully it'll be plied by the next time I record and I can show you. Okay, um, let's talk about knit-alongs. So today's the 30th of January and January's knit-along was the Finnish Frog Repair or Repurpose knit-along. I have decided that since I'm doing just these independent standalone knit-alongs this year, I'm going to run them for two months, but I'm going to start a new one each month. So I am starting a new one at the beginning of February, but the January one we're going to let open. I'm going to leave that thread open and it will continue. So if you're still working on things that fall into those, you know, finish, frog, repair, um, repurpose, categories you can continue that but there will be another along starting if you would like to join in that as well or instead of it's up to you and part of this is self-serving because I'm still working on some projects and I want to show you the one that I worked on um, since the last time I recorded actually I worked on two um, if you remember that granny that mini granny square afghan that I showed you that I was told you I was going to turn into a pillow cover. I did actually knit or crochet a couple more squares and added it to it. I'll show you that once I get it all done though. But what I did do was my repurposed project. I started that and I think I explained this to you um, that I had a whole bunch of old hand knit socks that have just gotten holes worn in the soles over the years. I never really knew what to do with them. I hated to throw them away because it seemed like a waste. There was nothing wrong with the cuffs on most of them. And I just thought there has to be a way to repurpose them. And so my plan is I'm gonna make a blanket. So I sat one evening and I cut <laughs> the cuffs off of a whole bunch of socks. And so this is a basket full of a whole bunch of sock cuffs that have been cut off of their socks. Um, Okay, I've got a lot of stuff in here, so I'm going to try. So here's basically what you what you get. So I this was the cuff. I cut it off. Well, it would have gone this way. Um, I cut it off and then sliced it vertically to open it up. So I have a rectangle. Obviously, my cuff rectangles are all various sizes because not all of my cuffs are exactly the same height, but they're close enough. So I've got a whole bunch of those. And then in looking at the socks, what was left, the sock, the foot part, I thought, well, you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with the instep on most of these either. So I went and I cut smaller rectangles out of the instep part, the top of your foot. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of those. 
Now the soles, obviously, those are the parts that were the most worn. There were a few that weren't too, too bad, and I did kind of cut those parts out. They're a little more faded, so I don't know if I'll actually end up using them or not. But, um, yeah, it was interesting. Then there were, as I was looking at them, I thought, well, there's really nothing wrong with, like, the back of the heels. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did cut a bunch. Let me see if I can find a heel part for you. Well, I don't know. I did cut the back of the heel off of a lot of socks as well. And then <laughs> um, the one, some of the socks, like this one, this was a sock I only made one of. It was a color work sock and it was way too small. I never wore it, so I've cut it. Oh my gosh, can you believe I cut this color work? But yeah, um, this was actually an instep piece. But I have the back of the heels on a bunch of socks that were not worn. Um, so all I was mostly left with was toes and the very bottoms of the socks um, on a lot of them. So I pretty much cannibalized these socks as much as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like sizes together in strips and sew them together. And then I will seam the strips together and I'll probably stagger them like a wide strip and then a narrow strip. And it'll just, I'll have to wait and see how it all ends up working out. But anyway, this is all the pieces that I have to work with. I don't anticipate this is going to be super large um, in the end, but I have absolutely no idea because I have not taken the time to try to lay it out yet. But then... I decided to cut off toes. <laughs> now I did not do this on all the socks because this would have been ridiculous and I would have had way too many, but I cut the toes off of a lot of socks um, and I'm going to stuff them with catnip and then just stitch them shut and there will be little impromptu cat toys. Yeah, I know. I told Bill about that. He's like, they're gonna be everywhere. Like there's gonna be catnip everywhere. They're gonna just tear those apart. And he's right, but I only saved like a sandwich baggie's worth of toes for that. And so then what remained was basically just chunked up bits of sock. Um, and I stuffed them in a pillowcase and put them in a low box. And it's sitting up on top of our kitchen cabinet where my, my cat Babette likes to sleep. And so it's been a little impromptu bed for her, which it's funny. She's been sleeping in it ever since, except yesterday she suddenly decided she didn't like it anymore and she was like not in it at all i don't know what the deal is i don't know why she suddenly decided she doesn't like it but yeah cats are weird so anyway that's a lot of reusing like no parts of those socks are essentially being not used and i feel really good about that um it's a goofy project admittedly once i sew all those together i basically will end up with a you know a quilt top, you know, sort of a patchworky knit quilt top. Um, I will even off the edges and then I'm probably going to back it with like a piece of flannel or something. I have not yet decided if I'm going to put anything in it as like batting because it's going to be pretty warm with all that wool. And then if I put flannel on the back, it would be pretty warm anyway. I think my decision will land on how big it ends up being. If it's not going to end up being much bigger than a throw, I probably will not fill it with anything. Um, this may end up just being like a dog or cat blanket, to be honest with you, and that'll be fine. I just want to see what I can do with it because I'm having fun. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, ever since I steaked that sweater, which by the way, I did get all the buttons, the second set of buttons in the mail, they ended up being way too small for my hero. I don't know what the deal was with that um, but I'm gonna probably end up putting those buttons that I showed you last time those coconut buttons on my sweater I just haven't done it yet anyway ever since I cut that sweater I'm like all about cutting up the knitwear apparently because I just sat here and I snipped and snipped and snipped and it was so much fun and none of them fell apart I mean it's really a fun exercise like if you are afraid to do steaking or to cut your knitting Save some old socks and just do something like this. Even if you don't make anything out of them afterwards, just practice cutting the knitting. It's, it's very freeing <laughs> to do this. So anyway, all right. Um, that is what I'm doing in my January. You know, that's my big repurposing project. 
Um, I've really enjoyed seeing everything that you guys are doing. So again, I'm going to leave that thread open for another month, but I did decide I wanted to do a couple of prize drawings this week um, because there has been a lot of chatter in that thread. And so I drew for two prizes and um, I did one random number generator for all of the posts in that thread. And then the other one I did just for photos. So if you had posted a photo, um, each photo was an entry. Um, so the winner, well, the prizes, here, I'll show you. Um, I pulled out four different skeins of worsted weight semi-solids from my shop. So we've got sky blue, grape juice purple, magenta, and lime green. Um, so I have two winners. Each winner can contact me and you can tell me what your choice of colorway is and I will send you a skein of worsted weight in one of these pretty semi-solid colors because I figure you can always use a semi-solid skein of worsted weight yarn for something. It's good for hats and mittens and everything else. Um, so these are the prizes for the January knit along, um, the January winners. I'll probably do the drawing again at the end of February as well since we're running it two months now. Um, anyway, so the, the participation drawing, which was all of the posts in the thread as of this morning, the, draw, the random number generator chose post number 33, and that is WMH302, who is Wendy. So Wendy, congratulations. PM me, let me know your color choice, your top choice or two, um, and I will get that sent out to you. And then I did the photo drawing and it picked the 43rd picture. So I had to count down through all of the pictures. And that ended up being Nanita NYC, who is Rebecca. Um, so Rebecca, congratulations. PM me, let me know which color or two you like best and whichever one is available, I will mail that to you. And I need your mailing address from both of you as well. So congratulations and thank you so much to everybody who's participating. It's been a lot of fun. I love having all these chatter threads going. Um, we still have the, um, you know, keep the conversation going thread going, which everybody's, you know, a lot of people are taking part in. Um, then I have the knit color work um, thread going on as well. So take part in that if you'd like. Then I started a thread for our February knit along which is going to be a hand spun along. Um, and I have to say that knitting this cowl that I'm working on kind of gave me the idea for that. So, and, and plus I want to include spinning a little bit more in our knit alongs or alongs in the group this year. So this one is going to be February through March. Cause like I said, I'm going to stagger them two months at a time. So at the end of February, the finished frog one will end, but the, a new one will start for March. You know what I'm talking about, because <laughs> I'm not saying that very effectively. Um, but starting February 1st, well, really starting anytime, because I've got the thread up, um, is we're going to do spinning. So it can be either spinning, or if you don't know how to spin, it could be knitting with hand spun. Um, it's just a hand spun along. Somehow, either spinning or working with hand spun yarn needs to be a part of it. Um, there's lots of wonderful um, spinners out there who do spin their hand spun if you are looking for hand spun. Um, Sarah, who is PA Knitwit in our group, she's super active. She is a fabulous spinner and she does have an Etsy shop with her hand spun. I'll put the link to that in the show notes. Um, Steven from um, Leading Men Fiber Arts and from the Dramatic Knits podcast, he sells his hand spun as well. Um, I don't know how much of it he has in his shop, but that's another option for you. And I'm sure there's tons more. Um, and, or maybe you have a friend who you know is a spinner and they have some hand spun that you could use. But anyway, I just hope you'll take part. And if spinning is something that you've always wanted to try, maybe this along will be the chance for you to try that. Um, I obviously am going to finish spinning my, or ply my um, BFL silk that I've got on my wheel right now. Um, my next spinning project, I think, what I want to have kind of be my focus during the along, although hopefully it won't take me the whole entire time, is I would like, I'm going to go to, through my fiber stash and my yarn stash, and I want to pick out some fiber that I can spin in a nice fine single, and I want to ply it with, um, a commercial yarn or 
an already spun yarn. It's something I've always wanted to try, but I've never done before. And I was watching um, Knitting by the Sea with Lisa, Saratoga Knitting, the other day. And she was talking about doing that, um, about, you know, how she'll sometimes get more bang for her buck with her spinning because she can spin a single and then ply it together with a different yarn and she gets more yardage that way. And I thought, you know, that's really cool and I've heard of doing that. Um, and so I'd like to try it. So that's going to be my new thing, my spinning thing that I'd like to try during our along, our hand spun along. Um, so I have to pick what I want to do for that though. I actually have something in mind for what I want to spin it with. I just don't know what fiber I want to use. So I have to work on that before I show you or before I talk about it too much. So stay tuned. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that next week and let you know what I'm going to work on. But I'm excited. I love working with hand spun. And I, like I said before, I want to knit with my hand spun more. I've got so much of it in there. Um, it's just silly to spin it and then not use it. Um, to that end, for those of you who maybe would like some more stash to do for hand spun, I'm going to do a drawing for that as well. And I have two braids of fiber here, and I have two skeins of um, hand spun that I have spun that I'm going to open a thread in the group um, to do a drawing for this. And next time I record I will pick two winners and the winners can choose one of these things so if you are a spinner and you'd like to spin maybe you'll pick the fiber you don't have to um, but if you don't spin and you would like some hand spun I've got a couple options for you too so the hand, the fiber options for this drawing will be a, uh, a braid of Polworth silk um, in this colorway which is my ageless blue colorway it's just a lot of really pretty bright blues in there so that's one option. And then another option will be this braid of 50-50 um, camel, baby camel and tussa silk. Um, it's in the Sakura pink colorway. And there's still some natural color of the fiber in there as well. This is super soft and looks luxurious. Um, yeah. So anyway, those are the two fiber options. And then as far as hand spun yarn, I have to admit, I'm horrible. I used to be pretty horrible about keeping track of what my hand spun was. This one I can tell you was spun from some unwind yarn company, um, one of her bats. As far as I know, Dana does not dye fiber anymore. She just does yarn. Um, but I used to love her fiber. Maybe she's started doing fiber again. I don't know. Um, but her fiber was lovely. So this I spun up into a kind of a a chunkier yarn than is my usual spin um, but this was three ounces of a bat that includes merino BFL, swirl BFL, Polworth, Tessa Silk, and Firestar um, and I got 92 yards of a two ply and like I said this would probably it looks really poofy um, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna knit up into a worsted weight so that's one option all these pretty purples and blues in there and there's not a ton of Firestar, like it's not super, super sparkly. Um, in fact, it's hard to really see much at all. Boy, I hope I didn't put the wrong tag on here. <laughs> I don't think I did. But anyway, that's the one. And then the other one, this is the one I don't know. I cannot remember what fiber this was. I know I apparently had a tag on it at one time and it came off. I will try to do some research. But I would say this will probably knit up more into a fingering weight, and I'll have to check the yardage on that as well. But it's just this really pretty green. Um, it's got some darker shades in it as well. It's very soft. I want to say it might have a little bit of silk in it. I just don't remember. So anyway, those are the prizes for that drawing. Like I said, I will start a thread. Hopefully by the time this is up, I'll have that thread started already. Um, and go ahead and enter if you'd like to, and you can use that if you're one of the winners. You can use those for our hand spun along through February and March. Okay, let's see. I've got some new things to share with you. I already showed you the flexi flips, but I've got some yarn here. <laughs> go figure, right? Um, and actually, these are in reverse order, only because that's how they are in this little basket over here. Um, I purchased a couple skeins of Polworth DK from Moonstone Dye Works. Um, that is Tommy who has the, um, 
what is her pot? Um, squirrel. Squirrel Pie Productions. That's her podcast. I knew it had squirrel in it. Goodness. Um, but she's um, Dynamite Trujillo on social media. And she dyes yarn also. And I do have other yarn of hers. I haven't knit it yet. But I saw this in her shop and I thought this was just super pretty. Because it's on a very neutral background but it's got all these bright pops of color. And it's her Starships colorway. So I bought two skeins and I don't know what it'll become. But it's super happy and that's why I needed to have it. So I did get those. And then, let's see. I placed an order with the Wooly Thistle. Oh my, me and the Wooly Thistle. I love the Wooly Thistle. But this is actually mostly for a specific project. Um, well, okay. That's sort of a lie. <laughs> These three skeins are not for an actual project. These are, well, this one might be. I don't know. Pretty much every time I do an order with the Wooly Thistle, I throw in some Jameson and Smith just so that I can add it to my collection. Because color work, you know, I want to do a lot of color work this year and um, it's good to have because this is a wonderful yarn to do color work in. Um, but the yarn that I actually made the order for is some Tuku wool, which I have purchased before. Um, and this is their fingering. They have a tuku wool fingering and a tuku wool sock, and the sock has nylon in it. The fingering does not. Um, this is 100% finish wool. And look at this color. Isn't it beautiful? Um, how well it's turning out. It's a really deep burnt red. It's just lovely. Um, it's called... I can't read the label. I don't know. Ho... Hohua? Hohika? I can't really read the writing well, um, but it's 195 meters, so a little more than that in yardage. But I got this red, and then I got this natural color, and then I got this gray, this light gray. Um, and my plan, I actually have a plan for why I purchased this yarn. I would like to make the... Um, Okay, I have it on here, right? The Mitten Garland Advent Calendar by Kathy Lewinsky. I think I may have mentioned this before, I don't remember. But um, if you watched Skandier Knits, um, um, oh gosh, words are not coming to me. The December, you know, when people were vlog. Vlogmas, that's the word, oh my gosh. Um, in her Vlogmas, a lot of them, she you could see her little mittens that she had done up from this. They're just so cute. Sorry, bra strap issues today. Uh, anyway, they're so adorable and I would just love to do them. They're little color work mittens. Uh, I'll put the link to the pattern in the show notes. I have purchased the pattern. I didn't realize until after I purchased it that you could actually download each of the um, individual mitten patterns from the woman's website for free, which is fine. I didn't mind paying for it either, so that way I have it all in one PDF, and I think there's a little bit of extra stuff in that PDF as well. Um, but anyway, my goal is to have these knit for Christmas this year. Now, will I actually get them all done? Who knows? Even if it takes me a couple of years, I just want to work on them. But that is enough of those three colors, and then... I, I don't know if hers used a green or a darker brown. I think I'm going to use a darker brown color, which I have a lot of Jameson and Smith natural colors left over from when I made my sheep head hat. So I'm probably going to use those. Though that green that I did show you, this darker green, I could use that too. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Plus I think I maybe have some other Jameson and Smith green in, in my stash. <laughs> So we'll see what I end up using, but that's what I purchased that for. I actually had a project in mind. It wasn't just gluttonous yarn acquisitioning, <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with that either if you want to do that. I do it enough. Okay, so those are my new things. I did have one more new thing, but I don't think I brought it in here, so I'll have to show it to you some other time because I don't see it in here. It's a little stitch marker. It's super, super cute. I must have sat it down somewhere between here and my office, though. Um, I wanted to run down, um, 
a list of events like fiber events that I'm going to be at this year because there's quite a few um, and this is actually kind of verging into shop news now um, and I'll do 10% at the very end um, but these are all events that I'll be at because I'm going to be vending at them I'm vending at a lot of events this year which is very cool because I usually only do a small number like between four and I think six is the most I ever did in one year I've got seven on the calendar already with two no actually I have eight on the calendar already with a ninth probable for the fall um, but I'm going to tell you about the first I think seven because they're the ones that are in the first half of this year okay so March 24th if you're in Pittsburgh that's when Indy Knit and Spin will be taking place it got moved from February to March this year so that is Saturday March 24th I'll be there it's at its new location at the Ace Hotel down in East in East Liberty um, and I will have all of this information um, in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. I will update the where you can find Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I haven't updated that in a really long time. Um, so I will put all of that in there so you'll know where I'm vending. I'm also working on updating um, my website. I know, I have not used the Fiber Nymph website in ages, um, but I'm working on redoing that. So all of that will eventually be up there too. So just letting you know where you can find that info. But that's March 24th. Then March 25th, the next day, that Sunday, I will be vending at Home Spun Yarn Party. You have no idea how excited I am about this. This takes place every year. I think this is their 10th year in Savage, Maryland. I've been to it, but I've never gotten to vend at it. It's really hard to get into. Um, I've tried before and failed, but this year they accepted me, so I am super excited about that. So if you go to Home Spun Yarn Party, I will be there. Yay! Um, it's gonna be a crazy weekend though let me tell you <laughs> but it's okay my husband's like it'll be fine I'm like okay as long as he's there to help me out I'll be good um, then April 21st back up here uh, around my house well not here but in this area is the rags fiber affair and wool market which I have vended at before that takes place in Delmont PA at the Delmont fire hall that's about 20 25 miles east of downtown Pittsburgh so Totally drivable if you're in the area. Hope you'll show up for that. Um, May 4th, I will be vending at the Needles Up event that's taking place the Friday before Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, I did mention this when I did my shop news video last week. I'm super excited about that. So, so appreciative of being asked to be a part of that. Um, so I will be there vending on May 4th, but then that means I get to be at Maryland too. So I will be at Maryland at least that Saturday. I don't know if I'll be there Sunday as well but I'll definitely be at Maryland Sheep and Wool, not vending at Maryland Sheep and Wool, just being there, walking around, shopping, talking to people. So that'll be a lot of fun because I didn't get to go to Maryland last year. Then, um, also in May, a couple weekends later, the 19th and 20th, I will be um, vending back up here in Southwestern PA in Waynesburg at this Waynesburg Fiber Festival. Um, that's a Saturday and Sunday show. I've vended there once five years ago and then I haven't made it back since because of dates and things that I just couldn't do. So I'm excited to be back at that show. Um, then jumping into June, June 2nd and 3rd, I will be back in Maryland at the Frederick Fiber Fest, which I have not been to before, but it was brought to my attention and I applied and got in. So yay, I will be there. Um, and then in July, July 14th, um, is the Gypsy Stardust Yarn and Fiber Show. And that again is back closer to my home, Harrison City, PA. Um, here in southwestern PA and that was a fun show that last year was the first year for that. It was great um, It'll be bigger this year. I hope you can stop by for there, too Of course, I'll be talking about these shows as they come up over the, the months um, And then I've got things in the fall, but we'll talk about the fall after I get through the summer. How about that? Um, yeah, it's just super exciting. I am thrilled to be doing all of these shows this year um, I you know I've always liked to have a balance in my business between doing my sh online shop updates and doing shows where I can vend and actually meet people. And then I've always had some wholesale business that I've done. And I've always felt like that's been a pretty good balance for me. And um, I'm, I'm glad to be able to be increasing the amount of in-person time I'll be having with shows this year. Um, and I'm very optimistic that this is going to be a wonderful shift in my business. Um, it's just... 
things are really lining up really well for 2018 and I'm very excited about that. Um, okay, so all that to say, that is the where I'm going to be. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm working on updating the website. I'm kind of working on revamping the fiber nymph dye work look, so to speak. Um, I'm going to be coming out with new ball bands. They're going to have a new look soon. Um, my business cards, everything will be, you know, kind of similar. Um, so I figure it's time, you know, I've just celebrated my seventh anniversary, um, of my business. I started it in January of 2011. So it's been seven years. We're in our eighth year now. And, you know, it's just time to freshen things up a little bit. And um, just, I, I don't know, I'm excited about this year. I really am. And I hope you will be too, because it means a lot of new things for you guys as well. Um, let's see what else. Um, I do not have specifics about the next shop update other than when it will be. <laughs> the next regular shop update will be Friday, February 16th at 6 p.m. So regular update time. Um, I know that's still a couple, <coughs> excuse me, a couple weeks off, but what I'm probably going to be doing, um, and this is probably going to be how things are going to go between now and through all of these shows, is I will have intermittent shop updates, but I will also be doing sort of like restocks in between the regular updates. And so when I do restocks, either of like really popular colorways or um, specific items, like I'm gonna be doing a massive restock of semi-solids on like fingering weight and sport weight and worsted weight. Um, that's gonna be going into the shop over the next several weeks. Um, I will announce that stuff on social media. So like my Insta Fiber Nymph Dye Works Instagram, um, the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Facebook page, and of course in the Ravelry group, Fiber Nymph Dye Works Ravelry group. So if you want to know when those restocks are happening, um, those are the best places to look or to stay tuned into. You can also subscribe to the RSS feed in the shop itself, um, and you know, you'll be notified when new things go up into the shop. So that's fun and exciting and a slightly different way of me doing things, but I think it'll be good for all of us. Um, it'll also help me be able to keep new things into the shop on a more of a rotating basis as opposed to only on shop update days. Um, but I will have more news about the actual shop update for the 16th the next time I record. Um, this is so weird having to look over here. Oh, speaking of the semi-solids, if you have a semi-solid color that you would really like to see in the shop because you want to use it or you use it a lot, let me know and I'll make sure that I really stock that. Um, if there's a lot of people who are looking for like silver gray or, you know, whatever, <laughs> um, I'll make sure there's enough of that in the shop because I, I would like to keep those in there more. Um, and I also just wanted to remind you the conversion rewards program is going on all through 2018 in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. So if you are knitting or spinning with Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn or fiber, um, please be keeping track of that and posting that in the finished objects thread there. And the thing I need you to remember is once you hit like that redemption point of 500 grams, you need to message me on Ravelry and let me know if you're ready to redeem that, those grams. Um, because I'm not going to contact you just because it's written in there because you may not be ready to redeem them. You need to let me know, hey, specifically, I'd like to redeem my 500 grams or whatever, and then we can take care of that. Um, there's some of you who are really close and um, at least one person who has 500 grams in there. So that's super exciting. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this and I love seeing all your projects. You can read all of the criteria for that program in that thread. If you have any questions, feel free to message me and I'll be happy to, you know, let you know answers or clarify things. I think that's everything. 10%, honestly, I think the only thing going on besides a lot of work in my house trying to get ready to tear the kitchen out. Um, we went to the motorcycle show out in Cleveland this past weekend, which was a lot of fun because it was kind of like a date day for me and my husband. I almost said my boyfriend. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've been married over a year and a half now. Um, no, it was a lot of fun. It's just, you know, it was a nice day. We went out to breakfast and we went to the show and then we went to dinner on the way home and got to climb on and off a whole bunch of motorcycles and see stuff and it was a good day. Um, 
And also on the way there, of course I did some knitting in the car because it was a lot of driving time, but I started reading Shackleton's Whiskey by Neville Peet um, to my husband while we were driving. We like reading to each other, but since he was driving, I did the reading. Um, but it was a book I bought him for Christmas. I think I talked about it around Christmas time. It's really interesting. If you're into Ernest Shackleton and that history, it's a really interesting book. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to go and hopefully this will process without too many issues. And other than that, I will probably see you next week. Take care.